it's better than say CalArts or something like that. So we're going to hear from a student from CalArts. Um, he lives in the States and he got accepted there. So, um, and Garth helped him a bit with some of his skills. So we're going to hear from him today. Um, we have helped lots of students get accepted into other programs like Ringling or SBA or Pratt. Um, now most of the students that come to us are interested in going to Sheridan Animation. So we are going to show you mostly about that today because it's a really challenging program to get into. Um, for schools like um, Ringling or CalArts, it'll be similar. Uh, the only major difference with CalArts, I would say they'd like to see their, their sketchbook is really important. Uh, they first look at your animation, your, sorry, your anatomical drawings and your figure drawings first. Uh, they kind of, so they look through some stuff first and then look through um, the next section. Uh, they want maybe a little more creative free choice and more animals, lots of sketching from life. Um, and in Ringling, I find, I'd say like they like to see a lot of sketching too, a lot of creativity in their portfolios. But you know, one animation school to the next, they're looking for similar things. They want to see your characters, that you can rotate a character, you can make a story, you know, um, that you can figure draw. Um, and so let's look at some of the portfolio requirements. So I'm going to do a little screen share here. Um, of stuff just to give you a little preview. Now, if you want to apply to Sheridan, um, you can get the general guidelines just as a PDF online. And each year, they're gonna they sometimes make little changes to the portfolio. Um, so, but you you can go and look and see that they'd like some observational drawing. They want some figure drawing, and they'll tell you specifically. Um, what kinds of figure drawings like they want um, two drawings must be a figure that's sitting or standing and should prioritize form and structure and those can be five to 20 minutes and then they want two other drawings that should be poses as if the figure is in motion um, so you can see that they tell you kind of some guidelines um, so there's requirements like this sort of test type pieces and then of course like your creative free choices um, so these, these hand drawings. So with regards to the hand drawings, you'll apply and then they'll tell you what action they want the hand to do that year. So there'll be a before by kind of anticipating the action and then carrying out the action. And next week we're going to be learning about how to draw hands on Wednesday. Um, so and then they would like you to do some character design. Um, so, you know, you'll have a character rotation. Have you guys done that with Garth yet? Rotating the character? Okay. So, um, and he also covers this stuff. He's got an animation fundamentals online course in the fall. It's an eight week course that has a video tutorial and then a, an online group lesson. So if you want to continue learning and it's quite affordable, like it's only $250 for eight weeks. So it's quite nice. And then you've got the short animation for that, like it's 24 to 48 frames each year. Again, they're gonna tell you what the thing would be. So, and you don't get to find out until you apply. So you can't really do a lot of preparatory work other than learning about it and practicing with it, right? So, which is always good anyway, right? Um, and there, there's lots of different ways you could make that little animation. I'll tell you a bit about that. They'll accept all kinds of ways. The storyboarding, which you guys have been doing in your class with Garth. So it's, um, they're going to give you those characters. Like I told you, they have these different characters they cycle through and you have to use those two characters. And then it's just like four panels where you draw it. Um, and so we're going to see some examples of those today. Um, you have to do some perspective drawings. So again, um, usually it's an interior of some type and an exterior, and they'll tell you each year what the subjects are. So, um, and they want them to be drawn from observation and then, you know, usually adds, you're going to be adding some figures or characters or something into those scenes, right? Um, and then, of course, you can have whatever you want in your personal work. So, and some of those things might be, um, 
you know, uh, some sketchbook stuff. It's nice to see sketchbook stuff because a lot of times that's where you really show your your characters and your ideas. And um, so it's nice to have at least one page of that. Um, and then, of course, lots of your cartoons, your characters, what you really love, what you're great at, you know, you can really stand out. Like um, the digital painting we're going to do with Anthony this week, that might be a piece or something like that that you can put in. Um, so that's just something you have to look at each year and then find out about. There's an info session that they uh, do with the students. Once you apply, you can go and um, find out um, about what is going to happen each year. So um, another great source to learn about um, portfolios is to just do some searches. People, you probably have you looked before um, what students have handed in. Yeah. So and what what Sheridan does, they actually mark their stuff. So I'm going to just show you. I have this one student who's going to talk to us today. She's I think she's in Alberta somewhere. And she sent Garth and I this long list once of all these different portfolios and the grades they got. And she wanted to know Garth's opinion of this. So it's a nice little study. So she said, okay, so this the first one, uh, hubris got an 89% on theirs. So let's look at, we can look at hubris. So I'm gonna send you these links so you can see so you can look, because we'll kind of glance through a few of these, but I'm going to send you this list that she made. So you can kind of go through and start to see, well, what gets a 65? What gets an 89? So you can kind of start to see where do your drawings fit in there, that when you sort of feel like, oh, I feel like I'm ready to apply. And even if you don't totally feel ready, the act of making the portfolio teaches you all those skills and pushes you and you get input. So it really helps. It's really worth doing it even if you don't think you'll get in. Why? Because then you're going to get, you'll know where you have to work, right? Um, so you can kind of get a sense of how some of the work looks, right? What are you shooting for in your figure drawings, right? And look at lots of different people because all their work is different, right? So you can do a lot of this kind of searching online and you can see what different character rotations from different artists just to get a sense of what your peers have been doing what's sort of expected in um, uh, the perspective drawings that kind of thing and, and so it's really nice when you find students that post their grade sheet you can look at their work and see how did they do on that section see how it is so it gives you a little bit more idea what you need to be doing for yourself obviously be true to you they want to see who you are don't try to give them what you think they want be you just look at this just to see the sort of level of work or maybe get some creative ideas and even by looking at them you will tell what you think looks good and maybe what you think doesn't look as good um, but you'll notice that like in these perspectives there's often something in the foreground um, a little bit angular it makes it a little more exciting right and you can see the line work is really simple thicker in the foreground and softer as you go back to kind of create some step right so, so we're not going to look at all of these, but you can skim through these to get a sense of what are people doing, right? How different ways you could do the storyboard, right? So this is kind of a nice effect with like graying out some of the background and variety of shots and maybe a couple that are more angular. So, and then you just write a little description of what's happening. So and you can see, so it's just really great to kind of look through to see the kinds of things people are putting in, what kind of free choice stuff they're putting in. You can kind of get an idea of things, right? And then here she posted her grade sheet. So you get evaluated out of 10 on the figure drawing and you know there's the list of how many what you were supposed to have you know what you get on the hand the character rotation the short animation the storyboarding the perspective and personal artwork so and when daniel gets here he's going to give you advice he applied i think either two or three times so he finally got it 
So, and each time he did that, he learned stuff, like just advice of what works. Um, so that'll be kind of cool to see. So, yeah, so, you know, kind of. And so obviously you want to really want to push your strength and then work on your weaker area, right? Because, so the weak area, we tend to not want to do, <laughs> push it aside, we don't like it. And so what I've heard from a lot of students, they say, you know, work on the thing you hate so that you can have time to improve it, not be so stressed about that. You can really push the thing you're awesome at, so that really stands out and carries your portfolio. And then just some general practice on all that other stuff, right? So, and you can kind of look to see like, you know, like this is really catching, right? So what do people do that makes you think, hey, that's fun. And one of the things that's nice about looking at other people's portfolios too, is I think it helps open up your own thought of what's possible. What might be kind of cool? What do, what do you think stands out? This is really fun. So some of the color, and he's got like, he's definitely already got a strong style um, and like really high contrasty, simplified images. So it kind of, it's kind of fun. You know, not, not just the line drawings, right? So, so um, let's see, let's look at a few others. So you can, I'm gonna send you those to you. So let's look at it, just some general um, advice here. Okay. All right. So, um, so Seneca, are any of you interested in Seneca? Yeah, that's a good school. And, um, and there's lots of others, like we heard from Sarah, she's at Algonquin. Um, and you, there's one at, uh, Humber has one. Um, Conestoga has one. Most colleges have an animation program. So you can look through what their, what the course looks like, you know, read through what they're offering, look at what the student work looks like, look at what the professors are putting out, go to the open houses, see where you think you'd fit in and what's going to give you what you want. Um, you know, Sheridan's it's obviously a great choice, but it doesn't have to be, it's not necessarily the right place for you. So you don't have to feel discouraged if you if you were concerned that maybe it's going to take too long for you to get to the level that you want to be able to go there. You know, there's all many, many, many choices for you, right? Um, but if we look at Seneca, generally, and you should always check every year, check because sometimes they'll suddenly change something. Um, but generally, they'll want like two life drawings, two drawings of your own hand, two object drawings, two environmental drawings, two drawings of whatever your choice. Um, and they want to see your um, your, um, your resume as well, which is different um, from some of the schools. And um, so it's kind of traditional. And of course, they want to see your characters and all that stuff too, like typical character rotation and all of that. So um, a strong portfolio, number one, make sure you've got everything they ask for the way they ask for it, right? So always check, because sometimes people miss something. Know when the deadlines are when to apply, right, by the deadline, and go to that info session, um, you know, and uh, get get all the information so that you can do it. Now you can go, you can hand in your portfolio in person, you can do it online with something called Slide Room. It's really easy to use, just upload a JPEG or a PDF, and you have a little description, so it's really easy. Um, so you wanna show, number one, what do you think you wanna show, number one? Creativity, right? Your stories, your characters, and show what you're really great at. And that will carry you, right? And then obviously show strong drawing skills. So that really where you're at now is developing your strong your story skills, or sorry, your drawing skills, so that you can show those stories and those characters really well, right? And so find out what the typical drawing errors tend to be and learn how to avoid those, right? Um, so um, some other so um, is anybody here interested in illustration? You have something? Oh, okay. 
So with illustration, let's see, where's that? Which one is? I think it's this one. Oh, link didn't work. We'll have to go look at that. Um, there's a particular, so most illustration programs, they'll give you your list, you know, you make what you need to. Um, they are going to be similar. Um, we can go and pull up. So what would you be interested for illustration? Who wants to go to say OCAD? Anybody want to go to OCAD? Illustration's really good. What about shared in illustration? Anybody interested in that? Yeah? Okay. Um, so I think after I'm done looking through this, we'll go find their, um, yeah. Okay, so what was Seneca said they wanted your resume. So a resume focusing on any professional volunteer positions that demonstrate creative and artistic talents. So it's not it's not a typical resume. It's a resume for your creative life. So if you've done anything like that, you put it in your resume. Um, if you haven't done anything like that, that's a good question. So when you have questions like that, you can email either the program secretary or the coordinator, or when you go to open house, you know, ask them those specific questions. It might also tell you, maybe I need to start doing some of that. If I really would love to go to Seneca, maybe what could I do? I could demonstrate at a kid's art camp, uh, you know, volunteer. I could get involved in whatever arts community, what's going on in my town or nearby. Like there's, there's lots of different things that you could do. So you go, oh, okay. So that's why it's good to start finding out in advance what schools you think you might want to go to, what are they looking for. So we'll look at some illustration stuff too, um, because we have some people interested in that. And what some students do too, they'll, we want to look at how to prepare ourselves as well, and what's a good path to be able to go to either illustration or animation, because sometimes we need to build our skills before we can get in. And some people who want to study animation actually will take illustration for a bit, just to develop some really good drawing skills. So, but, um, so there's various, the, you know, pieces. And generally, they're all pretty similar, what you need to show. Um, so everybody that applies is skilled and talented, right? We want to know a little bit what's unique about you, and you're going to show us um, your skills while showing us your ideas. So try to, when you draw something or create something, it's always got a strong idea to it. Um, and then show sort of a diversity of different kinds of drawing skills, right? Different kinds of creative things. Um, so you've seen her work before. So part of making your portfolio is making some pieces and then figuring out how do I improve what I do have. So a lot of times you've got a lot of great stuff and sometimes it's just a little bit of adjusting and tweaking. So sometimes, you know, and you might not know how effective a piece is. So it's really good to find somebody you really trust to help you with that, right? So somebody that's, that is an, an illustrator, if you're applying for illustration. Uh, if you have a really great art teacher that you think is kind of fairly current in what colleges are wanting, you can ask their advice. You could ask Garth and I or have a lesson with Anthony to make sure so that this girl, you know, she needed some editorial help. She's very talented, but what should I put? Like this, maybe the first one might have been okay in an illustration program, but not as much as animation. So you got to think, what school are you applying for? And what do they want that they typically would like to have? And then what program you're applying for, therefore what kind of stuff you put in. And you get a little bit of help from somebody to give you a few tips on how to make it a little bit stronger. So like this girl, we helped her strengthen her work, right? So what we're seeing here are some examples of students that got accepted into illustration instead. So there's a little more creativity as far as the image types maybe. 
Um, it's, it can be more idea based as far as social commentary. It could be very stylized if you want and lots of sort of creative takes on reality, I guess. So, and a good thing to do if you want to apply for illustration is to look at what our current illustrators doing today. Right? So you can kind of get a sense of what kind of illustrator you would want to be. So, and just trying lots of different kind of creative things and images that kind of stand out there where they have some kind of impact. You're not just showing you can draw, you're showing some creativity and some ideas, right? I like that piece. That's really kind of interesting, right? Pretty evocative. So she was really good at traditional sort of pen and ink, but she also, she didn't just draw something in pen and ink, like, I don't know, it's still like, she, she had this neat idea in there. It really makes us notice her, right? So, um, so like I said, highlight your strengths and identify early on what areas you still need to work on and find some courses to take online, some videos, like we've done ProCo, my goodness, he can help you so much. You, you could sign up for his courses, but there's so much good stuff that's out there that's free with him. You can do a lot of training. Um, that way, do a bunch of that, and then take a figure drawing course or go to an open life drawing, um, you know, to, to work on things. So if you find one particular area a week, probably take an extra course um, or decide to sign up um, for and register for Art Fundamentals at, say, Seneca or Sheridan. Um, they'll help you prepare your skills, right? So, and you want to find wherever you go to get your education, to get you ready, you want to make sure they're going to focus on drawing. Um, because, like, going to a fine art school, let's say you live in Guelph, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go to the University of Guelph. They don't need a portfolio to get in. But you probably won't learn how to draw there. I've seen students come to our camp, you've been in that fine art program for four years and still can't draw. So you're spending a lot of money not getting what you need. So like that small atelier that Emmanuel found in Toronto is far better. If you get, and even though you might not get OSAP for some types of private education, you're spending way less money in the end because you maybe just go there for a year. Learn how to draw really well, that's what you need. So whatever way you learn how to draw well, right? Uh, so make sure if you are going to a university or college program to prepare that they teach you perspective and they teach you object drawing and they teach you how, a little bit of how to paint. They teach you mostly life drawing, right? That it has to be a drawing focused program or there's really no point. You spend a lot of money and it won't get you what you need. Or you could take, um, and actually this is Daniel and he might have some advice. What did he do? What does he see some of his friends at school do? What did they do before they got ready? because it takes a while. So he's going to have us a good story for us about that. So that's why we've seen this before. I've seen all that before. So I think we should get started with Daniel. So I'm going to stop screen share. So this is Daniel, everybody. Come on in. We're going to set you over here. And then I want you guys to come and gather around. Um, so, and this is, he's going to show you his portfolio. He's going to tell you stuff that he figured out worked for him. And you can also ask him questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I put my portfolios on there. Yeah. So, but you brought your physical ones too, right? No, I didn't. You did? I didn't because it's in Oh, okay. I was in over it. I was at home the whole time. That's something I guess we don't need. <laughs> We're just going to go there. Yes, you can use it as an armrest. Okay. okay, so you want to just get on your right? No problem. So, he's going to <laughs> sit down. He's going to show you on the screen here. I thought you were great. I'm sorry. It's in Oakville. When we got back from school, um, my dad and I planned to go back to Oakville to pick up whatever was left. Yeah. Just it's okay. It's all right. So, Let's go find, you get yourself signed in. Oops, no, escape out of this. All right, so you can sign in. All right, and I guess I should pause our recording just now. Okay, then we go to screen share. 
So are we going to keep talking for a bit, or are we going to change it? What do you think? I was going to answer whatever questions answer you were going to ask questions. me, and then I was going to like So jump. let's not screen share yet. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh. All of these cool, but sometimes. There we go. There we are. Okay, so it might be good to do a little bit of Q and A, but then we'll look at his work. So, um, so yeah, I was curious. So you said, how many you got? Five. You said four students for a second. Uh, well, from my just my class, there's probably more from like our year. Oh right. So. How did you prepare yourself? So you took our camp one year. Yeah. Right, okay. So you mean for like that first portfolio? Or you yeah. mean like so you in first general? Portfolio, and then you went to school. What did you do? Okay, for that first portfolio, I remember I was like, came out of camp and I was all like, haha, I can do this now. I'm gonna go and like draw all the time. And then school hits you and it like sucks the life out of you, and you're like, I don't, I don't feel like drawing anymore. <laughs> And you, you go home after math class and you're like, I gotta draw this, I gotta draw these bottles for this object drawing and I just don't wanna do it. And, and then like weeks pass and you're like, I still gotta draw these bottles and then you gotta do everything else. But anyway, so it's about like, I remember I had to try organizing my time to be like, okay, I'm gonna work on this this week and then that that week. Uh, life drawing, like I said earlier, since we didn't have anything in my general area, for life drawing, I had to drive like an hour out of the way to like this other place to go to that life drawing studio. And that studio is more like illustrative, super detailed life drawing, which isn't really what they want. So I had to kind of just make do with that. Uh, so there were some late nights, uh, some cold, lonely, dark nights. Um, ah, yes, it had its moments. So it was about that, and then I kept in contact with Karen and Garth, and I was like, hey, does this, does this look like garbage, or is it like, kind of okay? Yeah, I know the people online probably just Garth wants to be. Yeah. I mean, I think I remember helping him get his perspective on the object. Yeah, because I had a lot of trouble with like getting the technical stuff down, whereas the organic shapes where you're just kind of freehanding it was a lot easier to me. Yeah. So when you get into the portfolio the first year, how did you how did you do? Do you remember what your evaluation was like? Uh, you mean like the spreadsheet? Yeah, the spreadsheet. The first time you handed in your portfolio, how did that go? Um, well, handing it in was okay. I was like, wow, it's over. <laughs> and then I went into the like chapters and sat there for like 30 minutes not doing anything. <laughs> it was kind of nice. Um, the actual score though was kind of, like I did okay. I had like, they were scoring out of I think four back then. Yeah. yeah, and you had to get like 3.27, and I had like 3.04. So I was like, I, so I did all right. Um, I remember life drawing was like a big hit. Like, when I say hit, I mean negatively. Like, it wasn't that good. But it was, uh, everything else kind of was okay. So I knew I had to like work a lot harder on like a lot of the year, like everything kind of in general, especially life drawing. So when I went into Sheridan for the first year in Art Fundamentals, I remember just going to life drawing like every day. It was crazy. So, do you have to pay for that? No, uh, extra life is for free. Okay. It's like included in tuition, I guess. Is it the basics? Is that, I don't know if that's still the case or not. But anyway, you did lots of life drawing practice. Yeah. So, so you studied, how many years did you study in a Oh, It's just a one year program. So I was in that for one year, and then I transferred over to Visual and Creative Arts, which is kind of a similar thing. And I went to the second year of that program, and that's when I got it. So you made two proposals. Yes. Well, three. Third one got in. Oh, good. How did you keep the motivation going? Um. Well, when I was at Sheridan, like, um, well, I have this thing where if I have a goal, you just keep going at it until like you just get it. I also didn't have a backup, so it was kind of like you just gotta keep going until you end up having it. So, so basically, it's kind of if you really like what you're doing, you really you'll never like truly lose interest in it. There's always gonna be something like I would watch like 
a movie or I'd see like a new Steven Universe episode and I'd be like, man, I really want to be part of this. I don't know how, but it's just kind of exposing yourself to what you love in order to keep going at working towards your goal. Did you meet a lot of other students at school that kind of told you? Yes. Did that help? Uh, yeah, it did. Also a little intimidating because I remember and when I went into Art Fundamentals, we were all collected in the gym, like all the students, and there was like hundreds of people. And we were all sitting in the room and they were kind of like, okay, who wants to go into animation? And everyone raises their hand and they're like, you're only, they're only gonna take like a fraction of you people. And I'm like, oh, I gotta be in that thing. <laughs> so that was interesting. Uh, but you do form like a lot of friends and they kind of like work with you and you kind of help each other out. And it's kind of cool to see how you guys develop. Sure. So let's do this screen share. Do that now. You seen it? Hmm. Just hover down to that green button there. Green button. Click. Click. And then you click that and then screen. you click that. Share. Okay. And then it usually, for some reason, disappears. So then you got to go back there. And if that doesn't work, we go here. And we scroll down to Google. There. Oh, yeah, it's a touch screen. But you can click through those too. Okay, good. Cool. Okay. Don't tell me this stuff is work. And you said you don't have all of it, but do you still have a bit of your first couple of work? Yeah, actually, I found um, I was digging around on my computer the last few days, and for like my very first portfolio, I found like a good chunk of it. Oh, great. The second portfolio, for some reason, it's like there's only like two life drawing pieces I could find for it. It's almost as if my brain was like, no, you can't remember this, and I just didn't put it on my computer. <laughs> uh, but my latest one, like I have everything. So. so, I guess it makes sense to start with the first one. Yeah, I figured like we'll go through so chronologically. All right, am I still showing on the screen? Yeah, oh, shoot, yeah, I'm in like, side. I'm off to the side. Okay, cool. And then, anyway. You just click it. And okay. Then go Got it. Oh, it's oh, okay, fine, fine. No, oh. it. Yeah, jeez. It won't show, it, it's sweet dogs. <laughs> the first one you show. All right, this should work. I can't see what the pictures are, so it's going to be a surprise. All right, okay. And then you can just keep okay. the arrow on the side, right? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. All right, cool, I can just flip through. Awesome. Okay, so perspective. Like I said, um, the technical stuff usually really like uh, bores me a little bit. Like I know it's like a skill, and it's super important to know. But having to sit here and try to make sure everything looks in proper perspective was never really my thing. I always, I always kind of preferred freehanding it because it gives you a little more freedom. But I remember for this first year, I was really, really particular about getting every single thing right. I was like, okay, that cone for the lamp, I got to make sure that it's like a box. And then I turn that box into a cylinder and then extend the bottom of the cylinder so that it looks like it's arching. And it was like crazy. Uh, so I was doing that for everything and you can see every single one of my lines of yeah. me trying to get every single detail right. It wasn't until later that I realized that the teachers will just sort of, they won't look for every single line. They just kind of, they'll look at your drawing and they'll know if it's right or not, yeah. as long as it looks right. So I remember um, back then we had to do like two views of the same room. So I was going to draw me sitting on my bed and then you have to draw from your point of view in the scene. So I had that. Um, we're just going to go through them, and I'll just keep going back and forth. Uh, this was one panel from the storyboard we got given the character. This was my character. I had this big thing about having to be as clean as possible with my lines. But honestly, as long as your image is clear, it doesn't matter how, like, how rough your lines are itself. So that's something just to keep in mind. You can loosen up a little bit. You don't have to be as like, clean as this. Oh, oh, that is... Uh, maybe I'll come back to that. <laughs> um, my character. Yeah, man. Yeah, I really liked him. <laughs> I liked him until I got the results. That's okay. 
Uh, I went for like a scientist-y kind of vibe. I really wanted to, I didn't want to do like the stereotypical lab coat, glasses scientist guy. I wanted to do something really weird. So he has like this apron looking thing and a bow tie and like the robotic guy, which I thought was would have been kind of cool for expressions. So there he is. Um, sometimes I'm, I sort of messed up a little bit here. See here, this the straight line of him standing up and down, it's kind of arched here. So he's off balance a little bit. That's something to watch for because your figure has to look solid when you're rotating it, which my character does not. <laughs> uh, this was the second room drawing. Just trying to get the same room from this. Drawing my beautiful sisters beating each other up. It's great. Just another day at, at the house. Um, they don't do that anymore. Let's see. Object drawings. I, wanted, I was kind of keeping with the scientist kind of vibe for the whole thing. So that's why we have like the Hyde, Mr. Hyde formula on the top here. And uh, with the before and after for the object drawing, I don't know if that's still there. They don't do that anymore? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't really have to elaborate on that then. But basically the Hyde formula spills into the pet cage here and turns the cat, which is inside, into this big monster thing and it kind of like messes up the whole uh, composition of the scene, which I, I really liked. Wait, but they didn't, so that's fine. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, let's see, is that all I had? Okay, hold on. We'll just go back to this then. <laughs> okay, so life drawing was brutal because I don't, the only exposure I had to it was going to this camp. Yeah, then like two weeks. Two lessons, three lessons. Yeah, it was like three lessons or something. Uh, yeah, it was very twice and George passed it. Yeah, it was something not, like that. Not, not like this. <laughs> yeah, which lessons were great, but it's just that life drawing, it takes a while to really uh, get into it. Like, the only real key to doing it is, like, just doing it over and over again. So, I remember, like, this was one of the ones I did at that session I went to out of town. But then I remember I was kind of stuck for time and I didn't like any of my other drawings. So I had to talk my sister into posing for me and then drawing her. And it was like the most uncomfortable like four hours of my life <laughs> up until that point. Yeah, but I hope she doesn't watch this. I probably shouldn't mention that, but it's fine. Uh, I got the job done. But that was pretty much, this is kind of what I was able to scrounge up from that first portfolio. It's rough. There's things I liked about it, but overall that's how it went. All right. Getting off of that. Year two, I was only able to dig up these three life drawings. So I went to, so when I got into Sheridan and in our fundamentals, like you find out like, oh, there's extra free, extra life drawing sessions like every day. I was like, I'm just gonna go every day. And it's like the three hours per day. And like the smart people would be like, oh, I'm gonna go in for like an hour today and then I'll work on homework me I was like I gotta go into the full three hours every day and then just kind of I ended up pushing off the other uh, parts of the portfolio because I was just so obsessed about getting life drawing right and that actually worked to my detriment so if you, if, as you can see here some of the life drawings look a, a lot cleaner than the ones I did first year and um, yeah. but some of them like sometimes the line quality would still be off and Certain things I wouldn't be able to look for, like uh, things that you de I haven't hadn't developed yet. For example, proportion. I know a lot of people have struggled with the head size, but for me, it was actually the leg size. I would draw the legs too short, and the torso would be too large. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that people don't like about the life drawings. Like heads are always too big or too small, and, and it tends to be the same body shape that people misjudge. So, yeah. yeah, I remember like sending Garth an email, like a panicked email <laughs> with like 20 like uh, photographs of my life drawings and saying, Garth, I don't know which one of these looks good. And he's going through it. He's going through them with me. And he's just like, Legs are too short, legs are too short, legs are too short. That one's okay, legs are too short, legs are too short. And I was like, well, there's, there's one, there's one. <laughs> so that was something I had to keep in mind and whenever I was doing uh, any future life drawings as well. 
Uh, let's see. I also had my score. My score was worse second year. Yeah. Uh, they started marking out of 100 now with, with the percentages. And like, oh man, it's, it's hard to look through. Like hand drawings were kind of meh. Observational life drawings. Line quality was pretty good, but everything else yeah, was. Yeah. Oh, the future. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that must have felt. Oh, your animations, like all your story stuff is great. Oh yeah, they love that. The, they like the storyboard so stuff, like that stuff. Drawing issue. Okay. It was just everything else. Everything's yep, 60s uh, or 40s, 180 right here. So why do you attribute that difference? Because well, it's hard to say because the year before your value was pretty high, really. Yeah. Um, and I know it's, it's hard to compare because it was marked differently. Yeah. What do you think was the difference? Well, I think besides the difference of like, because each year they mark everyone relative to each other. True. That's something to keep in mind. So it's not just like, they're not like set marks. They're kind of like, well, you're like the best of say like this group. So you're pretty good. So you'll really like, they'll mark you higher then. Where I say if that person was with a bunch of really good people, they'd be like, oh, well, you're going to be marked a little tougher. Um, right. Like everyone in, in, in relation to one another sort of. Remember what one thing you said last year about reflecting on the different portfolios. Um, remember you saying something about that your first portfolio had a little more of your personality in it, and the second portfolio were really trying to be so careful and so tight that it lacked a bit of personality. Yeah. Do you still feel that or? Yeah, definitely. You know? I know. I actually like. When I got into animation, I interrogated the one, the one teacher who would talk to me. I was kind of like, what did I do wrong? What, did, what was wrong with me? And he was like, you mentioned to me about how um, the portfolio that I did this year, it was almost, it was very sterile. There was very, um, because, and when I'm looking back, I can totally see what he means. Because I was so focused when I got into Sheridan about just getting all the technical things right, that you, I didn't instill any of myself in it. And when people look through your portfolio, they want to see you shine through it and how you approach everything. You should be finding different ways to have fun with the different drawings that you have to do. And that kind of is what allows your personality to kind of uh, come through your drawings. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if I have, maybe from last year, I might have a bit of footage somewhere of your second portfolio. I'll see if I can find it. So you're saying the drawings look kind of stiff because you're still worried about the structure of the uh, they, I wouldn't say like I mean I guess some of them were stiff, but I mean I, I, I kind of I do because it's kind of like burned in my memory. <laughs> it's um it's just a lot of them they didn't have anything to them. I I, I don't know how to word this. Like for example, I had this room drawing of like we had to do a kitchen, and it was just a person sitting in a kitchen, like standing in a kitchen, and like the kitchen was drawn like to perspective, it was all correct, but there was nothing like special about it. There was nothing that stood out. It didn't look like I had fun with it. It looked like I was just following the guys. Right. That's kind of, and they want you to, they want to see you loosen up. That's kind of what going to be one of my main points at the end. Okay. Cool. But yeah, it's definitely like trying to make your personality shine through. Cause I remember with that first portfolio with the mad scientist theme, theme I was like super into it. But with this one, I didn't worry about a theme either. But I was just worried about trying to get drawings themselves correct, and that kind of weakened my portfolio. Wow. It's not just about drawing, yeah. It's no, it's about kind of what you put into expression. it. Yeah, your expression. Okay, let's get into the newest stuff. So I can stop looking at that stuff. <laughs> All right. So I named every single one of my uh, character rotations because I get kind of attached to the character I'm building. I, I remember my first one, my scientist guy was Klaus. My second one, which was like just this tough little kid, was Sal. And this is Winston. Winston was like my winner, so I, I was kind of I'm kind of proud of him. But anyways, so this was Winston. Uh, the main thing to look for in like uh, in doing the character rotation is a is a strong silhouette. That's, and plus making sure that the rotation itself is correct. So I remember like something that I found was really useful was taking photographs of all my drawings and flipping through them on my phone to kind of see how the body would turn because then you can pick out 
the different like uh, errors that you kind of come up with. Yeah, I also, for the legs here, when I was rotating them, because they're at like this um, kind of curve, I had trouble imagining how that would look like from different angles. So I sculpted that, those out of clay and would just kind of rotate the legs themselves. So that was really handy. Uh, and yeah, I chose, I never draw animal people like ever, but in order to help the silhouette so that you can immediately tell what the character is, having him be like a rabbit with like the ears helped him really stand out from like a shadow perspective. Yeah, plus I love magician stuff. So that, that was just kind of a bonus. Hand drawings. So the thing that I would hear emphasized all the time with hand drawings was that uh, most of them look really stiff. And the only way to make them look more loose is by drawing them a lot. Some people would, could do it right off the bat and I'd be like, how do you do that? <laughs> But then I and then I'd have to, what I would have to do personally. I mean, some of you probably can do that. I don't know, but for me, I had to just keep doing it. So I did like I did a pair. I drew I would do a pair of hand drawings every day for like I think two weeks or something. So I had the stack of hand drawings, and you would get progressively better at it as you went. Uh, something that was kind of interesting was when I was talking to a teacher for feedback about the hand drawings, is that. I would keep asking them questions like, well, how do I build up the hand? What do you look for at, for uh, structure? Like, do you want me to like make the palm kind of like an oval and then build the, the palm, like the, uh, the rest of the hand from like blocks or something? And he was really relaxed about it, which was kind of interesting. He was worried more about just getting the hand looking right and making sure that it was loose, but the performance in that everything looked natural. So, it just seemed like that was more the priority than actually having like proper building blocks showing through your hand. Uh, life drawings, went to lots of life drawings and, and this time I properly organized my time. So the life drawings turned out a lot better. So I have like a couple gestures as well as a couple longer poses. I'm trying to make sure I got all the curves right of the uh, body was an important thing. Uh, really being able to block in the figure as well. Yeah. Uh, same thing went with actually, actually I found like a similarity with the hand drawings in that they don't worry about how you build up the, like the building blocks of the body, but more making sure that the body more or less is put together properly. Like seeing how like the armpit here connects to the torso and how uh, the legs and the knee don't look disjointed, that sort of thing and making sure that they look loose. That's like a really important thing. Uh, personal work. Personal work is always, the, in the previous years, was like the last thing I think about because you, you get so worried about trying to get all like the actual things done. They're like, oh, what do I do for personal work? But personal work is actually super important in the whole self-expression sort of aspect of the portfolio. So I remember like really making sure that I had work to put in that I really enjoyed doing I remember asking someone like, uh, is it better to have a good variety of different works? Like maybe have a sculpture and maybe have like some drawings and then some paintings. But honestly, it's just doing the things that you really like. That's like the most important thing. Like the variety didn't matter as much. So I remember, uh, do you guys know what Inktober is? Yeah, I remember when I got it like a second year, I was kind of like, I want to take part in art, uh, art activities. That'd be great. So I wanted to do Inktober really badly. So I remember doing it and having like a lot of fun with it and having some stressful days with it too. But then picking out my favorite ones and then putting them, compiling them onto a page. My favorite three, I didn't want to clutter the, the page either. So this would have counted as one piece for the personal artwork. So these were my three favorite ones. Uh, let's see. This was my storyboard. Uh, I actually did the worst on storyboard. Yeah, really poorly. And then I like, when I got into animation, I went over to my storyboard teacher and I was like, what's wrong with this? And he was just like, I kind of like it. I don't see what the issue is. And I was like, oh, okay. So we, I actually don't know what I did wrong on this one, but I liked it. I named him Poe the Possum because he's a possum and I thought I like my alliteration. And then he finds like this tentacle. Ooh, crazy. Anyways, uh, room drawing. 
So like I said, technical stuff wasn't the, 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 uh, the uh, kinds of drawings that I liked doing, but I remember that I remember being told that finding ways to have fun with the different drawings that you do is like one of the most important things. And like I said before, it's what helps your personality shine through. So I remember wanting to do like, I want, we had to draw a bedroom. Well, I wanted to have like some sort of twist on it. So I made like this really goth looking guy. some really punky kind of, kind of thing going on and just going crazy with like the different objects in his room, making the, everything look messy, creating this weird lamp thing that I'm kind of weirdly proud of even more so than the rest of the drawing. I'm just like, man, I like that lamp. <laughs> but, uh, just kind of doing that, I think, really helped me as well. Uh, the second drawing, which was supposed to be an outdoor environment, I remember wanting to tell a story as well, at least like a little small one through the drawing. So having like the kid on the bench here with the snowman stealing his hat, I thought was like a funny idea, and I like drawing it out. Uh, also making sure that you have some depth in your drawing as well, having like the background area be fainter than the foreground is also pretty important. Yeah, one thing I noticed is that the background drawings, like the, the outdoor drawings that make sure you have foreground, background, background, perspective, because some students are just like kind of just disintegrate in the background. Yeah, like, I did that too. You have to be grayer with it, but it's still a space, right? I love that. It's going to start it make you laugh right away. If you can make the portfolio revert you and chuckle, it's a good thing, right? Or have some kind of reaction. The snowman looks kind of like all over me. I love that his stick is on his hip. I don't know what I'm about. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, for this next piece, the game Cuphead. Has anyone heard of that? Oh, I yeah. <laughs> I remember like the trailer came out and I was just like in love with the art in it. It looks so cool. I still, I still don't have the game, but I'm planning to get it. But I remember um, what I wanted to do was try something different than what I normally draw. So I tried experimenting with the style of Cuphead and kind of showing that. And I remember going on Portfolio Day to show like the teachers what I had so far. And they all liked this piece. They were all like, it's good to see you experimenting with different style and not being tied down to the same thing over and over again. So when, I said, when they all said that they liked it, I was like, oh, I'm putting that in. <laughs> like prioritize it over everything else. Uh, let's see, we had to do an animation. Uh, they were marking, I was told they were marking pretty easy on this one. They just wanted to make sure that, to see if you could make something move. So I did like, I was struggling in Adobe Flash to just do like a simple walk cycle. So we have Bert here, who I also named, do a simple one. Kind of shaky, but it gets the point across. Uh, let's see here. Uh, like I said before, before I made uh, Winston, because he was a magician rabbit, I was playing around with just magicians in general and like the assistant kind of design. And uh, this was this was another piece. Uh, these were just excerpts from my sketchbook as well. But this was another piece that they that the teachers really liked as well, especially over here. Why is this not scrolling? Especially on this top piece, which I can't scroll to for some reason. Maybe which maybe. Um, right. Straight. Okay. Hold on. Do this manually. Wow. Okay, that's not working. But anyways, on the unlike the top page there, which you can't see, I drew. I was trying to practice drawing top hats because sometimes getting the curves on that kind of hat is really difficult from different angles. So I had multiple sketches of the top hat from different angles, trying to make sure that I mastered it. And them seeing you try to figure out how things are drawn is something that they like seeing as well kind of how you can deconstruct something and then draw it from different angles to make sure that you fully understand it. Because in animation, that's what you're doing all the time. You're just, you're thinking how to rotate objects. That's all, that's all it is really. Now, get off of that piece. I'm gonna scroll down, why am I narrating? Uh, I was also, I hired like uh, two different tutors when I was uh, in this year because I was like, gotta get serious now, gotta shell out some money, gotta organize my time, so I gotta get in because I, I, I can't sleep until I do. So I remember I hired one tutor and he was like, something he told me about was uh, this one book that Michael Hampton did for life drawing, good book. Um, I ended up getting a hold of it 
and the way he would break down uh, both human body was very interesting. It was very uh, very blocky, but it helped give you a sense of how the body was formed. And I remember whenever I would show this tutor my life drawings, he'd be like, "Your feet's garbage. Your hands look bad," and he would just point them out all the time. So he gave me the, he gave me the book, and he said, "Study how he draws hands and feet." And my tutor wasn't expecting me to actually like look at it. So then I went home and just like copied how he would draw the hands and feet to see how he would build them up. And it was super useful in how it gave me a sense of how the feet actually look, how the ankles connect, how it rotates. And I remember then going to life drawing sessions and only drawing the hands and feet to really nail how to draw them, how to, how to draw like the different poses and such. And it was super useful. And my tutor was like, oh my God, Daniel, this is like great. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, it's, it's awesome. But it's, uh, I don't know, it was something I had to really work on. Okay, another personal piece. I got really, I really realized that I liked how watercolor looks on ink drawings and pencil drawings. So I really wanted to play with that and I wanted to have more uh, finished pieces instead of just sketches all the time. So I created this piece for fun of like this wizard reading in this library kind of thing. And I'm just, I really liked how I dealt with the color. And I remember when I was picking out my personal pieces as well, color isn't something I delve into a lot. So I wanted to make sure I had something in there that showed like, hey, I can do color too. So that's why I threw this piece in. Okay, score sheet, I guess. So everything turned out much better. Nice little happy ending. <laughs> Figure drawing, hand drawing, uh, character rotation was really good. Uh, animation was fine. Uh, storyboarding, as you can see, is 16 out of 25. They didn't tell you. They don't tell you exactly what you did wrong, which is kind of like the issue. But they didn't like something, so it's something I've been actually working at, and I'm gonna try to interrogate all my like storyboard teachers in the next few years to see what I did wrong here. Yeah, like often teacher. That's one of the comments we see a lot, like because Scar and I are always looking at lots of different evaluations of our students, but if then we're just like follow up with our students, how did you do? And the storyboarding is also often the one that has the lower mark. And yet we often go to the people why. And even sometimes when Garth and I look at them, I'm like, Garth has better ideas than I do, obviously, but still sometimes it's hard to know. So it's going to be a hassle. Because <laughs> you want to, obviously, it's important to still as you start working, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird for me, though, too, because, like, I remember from my first two portfolios, storyboarding was always the thing I would be consistently pretty good at, and everything else was kind of mad. So then it's this year where everything else is pretty good, and then that's, like, the kind of bad thing, so. Um, no, I actually redid it a few times because I was trying to really make sure I nailed it. And then I had my tutor look at it, and he tweaked a few things, and he goes, that looks really good. And I'm like, I think so, too. So... Never let your guard down. That's what I'm trying to teach you. <laughs> Always be on the offensive. But yeah, those were pretty much my portfolios. Um, the main thing I would say to learn, like that I think was the most important thing, and I actually like wrote it out and hung it on my wall, is that make sure you have fun with your work and you loosen up. So I have a habit of always tightening up with my work and trying to be too perfect. But honestly, as long as you loosen up and do it multiple times, like you should be fine. Um, we can do more recent for fun work, but I mean. Really? Oh shoot. Okay, gotta leave room for Q and A. Uh, okay, let me just look up my my own stuff. Um. Okay. Yeah, let's try this. Let's try this. <laughs> okay, um, I guess I could share this. Uh, if you want to see what my class looked like, this was us. We wanted to take a group picture. So this was all of us together, and there's this handsome guy right here. <laughs> but, um, anyways, I wanted to do something with this, so I redrew our class picture with pirates. That was just, I, I really wanted to do that. So now we have this handsome guy right here. <laughs> So that was something I really wanted to play with, and I uh, I keep forcing myself to work with color more because it's something I feel like I need to work on. Um, let's see. 
Let's see, do something for Hilda, because I love that show. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. I have to advertise it whenever I talk to people. Uh, oh yeah, I did Mermaid as well. Like right after I got into animation, I just started drawing mermaids every day because I'd never drew mermaids before and I thought it'd be a fun kind of event to take part in. Ended up being super stressful, but that's okay. Uh, I drew this, oh, oh shoot, I gotta get to this. Wow, within my time limit. Okay, let's go on Instagram. Do, 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 do. Bob Lobfish, one of my character design assignments. We had to draw like a character, we had to design a character and I wanted to work with Lobfish. So this is Mr. Bob Lobfish, probably one of my proudest creations. Um, let's see, did a different walk cycle. Instead of doing, uh, we had to do a walk cycles this year. And instead of doing the, the normal like pan across the screen sort of thing, I wanted to do a three quarter view, which I thought would have been difficult. So this is Pear Guy. Uh, oh, look, there's Garth. Garth commented on this too. I don't know if I responded to that. I should. Maybe I should have. Um, uh, let's see. We had to do hands and feet portfolios to study how like the hands and feet are drawn. And I did like a little intro comic that kind of leads into it, which I really liked. I love making comics. Oh man, I I love puns too. So you'll see a lot of that. But yeah, just that, that's kind of the stuff I've been working on. Yeah. Instagram art doing dance. Oh man. But anyways, that's what I've been up to. If we want to take questions, we can too. So now that you've seen some of his work, do you have questions? No, he's too intimidating. You can't ask him anything. <laughs> You're the least intimidating person ever. What? I'm so intimidating. <laughs> yeah. So look, I'm super tall too. That that helps. Helps with the intimidation factor. Like seven three. <laughs> yeah, any questions? Anything you're curious about? Can I ask about my day? It was fine, by the way. Yeah. All, all Photoshop. Yeah, I pretty much exclusively use Photoshop since it's like the only thing I have. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, hey, cool, my Hero Academia shirt. That's that's cool. That's yeah. cool. You yeah. like the show? Yeah, we really got into it. Yeah, awesome. Who's your favorite character? Probably Photoshopy. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. skill in general yeah like um for one draw lots I mean like I mean this too because I remember I didn't keep a sketchbook until like even like the first couple of years it was like the second year like after I failed the second time that's when I really started buckling down on a sketchbook and just trying to draw like everything or draw like trying to keep track of what I'm drawing as well because I was just drawing like random pieces of paper so it's good to see your progress and kind of what you can work on uh, let's see, draw from observation a lot, that's important. Even if you think, even if your style is something completely different, it's good to have a strong foundation in what you're doing. So for example, like drawing people I, like just randomly is really fun. 
and less fun when they notice. But it's still pretty fun leading up to that. It sounds like you learned that you need to develop yeah, that sense of personality for the work, right? Who you are. Yeah, make sure you have fun with what you're doing. How did you start doing that? How did I start doing that more? By having fun with what you're doing more. Yeah, if like if you can find ways of find like finding methods of enjoying half like what you're drawing more, even if it's like a topic or a subject that you really don't like, that'll usually help like find ways to inject more you into it, into, into whatever you're doing. Yeah, definitely loosen up. That's important. Well, that, that may be someone you draw really loosely. Like that's like, then you're already there. Good job. Um, I, cause I know I wasn't, uh, let's see. I think it's people here are observing my structure. So then they get all structural and they lose their sort of loose creative state. Yeah, and it gets really stiff. Yeah. So I guess I guess it probably helps to learn about structure, but then to allow that to be a loose structure and still have your sense of gesture, personality, your own ideas in it. Um, okay, how about advice for the portfolio in general? Like from your experience, what what did you learn from that that you think other students would benefit? Uh, start early. Start earlier than I did. I know a lot, a lot of people in my program would do it like in the last week, the last couple of weeks, but then they're like really good at like working under pressure. And I used to think I was too. But honestly, for me, like for that last year, I really like started in September and just kept making versions, like um, making different versions of the same thing over and over again. And that's what really helped me because then you can like, once you complete something, then you can go back and then create a new one and you approach it different ways and you kind of develop over time. And I found that super useful. So, now that you've heard that, anything you want to ask? Or anything you want to say? No, he's still too intimidating. You still can't talk to him. That's okay, guys. It's fine. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Every year there's different sort of groups as well. But they've been even having fun making the shows together. I think a lot of them go in Yeah, I can see that. That's what happens with the Yeah. Oh, a lot of them. Yeah. I heard from Sam. You, you heard Sam. back from him? Yeah. Wow. He now he got in. He graduated from Boston U, um, and in from somewhere I forgot to create which one. He ended up with his dream job in New York City in some kind of ad agency right this summer, and now he's he does these huge murals. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I emailed him like. Twice over the course of like, I emailed him like over like a few years and he would just never respond. So I was like, maybe he died. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I remember I, met, I went out of my way to email him after I got in and I was like, hey, Sam, I got in. I don't know if you remember me, but I got in and I felt like I was just talking to like the grave because I'm pretty sure I, I never got a response back, but that's okay. Oh yeah, I still have the video of him like doing a Rubik's cube in like 30 seconds. What? Yeah, it was crazy. I really do one side and like <laughs> we were like talking. We were like cause we were like living in the same like uh, built in the same house, Brock's parents' house. And I remember he was like on the last day. We were like in his room, and he had like this Rubik's cube, and he's like, "Hey, you know what? You want to know something cool I can do?" And I'm like, "Oh, what?" And he's like, "I can solve this Rubik's cube really quickly." And I'm like. How quickly? And he's like, Doo -doo -doo -doo, done. And I'm like, did that just happen? <laughs> oh, I my. First, hold on. The one thing that happened, well, because the first year we did the camp um, in a residential way, these guys ended up staying at her parents' house. And his parents are so nice. Oh, so yeah. Cool. And mom is a great cook, too. Yeah, and their dog's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Kept licking my feet. We didn't get to meet Rocky because we we'd actually didn't have it at their house this year. Like, oh, really? But, but anyway, um, 
that you and Sam found Garth's old portfolio or oh, yeah. sketchbook or something? Yeah, we were. We, okay, okay. So, so let me explain. I was in Garth's sister's room, and Sam was in Garth's room. And I remember visiting Sam one day, like in Garth's room, we were talking or whatever. And Garth's like closet, which was like packed with stuff, was just open. And I walk in there, and I'm looking through his stuff. I mean, not looking through, not looking through. I mean, I was just kind of glancing around. I wasn't like digging through it. But then I saw like the game Half Life and Half Life Two there. And I was kind of like, oh, he has games. That's cool. So I pick up the games, and then you pick up a few more things, and sooner or later, you're just picking up everything. <laughs> and then I'm like, then I call Sam over, and I'm like, Sam, come over here. We got to look through his stuff. <laughs> and we're looking through his old drawings, and then we just ran into his old portfolio. And I'm like, wow, awesome. So then we brought it to him, and like, yeah, we just, we just found it. I don't know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you see, Garth didn't know where it was, so it could have been anywhere. Well, yeah. So, but it was fun. We brought it to him, and so it was cool to see his first portfolio he handed in, and also some of his sketchbooks from high school. Because I mean, you look at his work now. Wow. Yeah, it's great. But he had some pretty funny pieces in his high school <laughs> sketchbook, but it wasn't stellar. And I and then because I remember at the time, but halfway through camp, and I remember Sam feeling really discouraged. It took him a while to get good at drawing. Like what he did in his grade 12 year, he went to a, a private art school, like a residential private art school. So he could really get serious about learning how to draw. And it was unbelievable, like from the beginning of the school year to the end, what he was able to do. Yeah. Great. So, but he, I remember Sam feeling really encouraged when he saw what Bert's first like, sketchbook when he was 16, what did they look like? And he's like, oh. glad it comes off that way. Um, it did help in some regard, I guess. But it's all about like just keeping a positive mindset, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it does. No problem. Is it you, Yang? She's in my ear? I don't know her. I don't even know what she looks like. So, I don't, she is full of great advice. She was very studious about it, very intense in, in her preparation. Like she would do so much study, you know, and she scoured the internet and had all these things happening. So, she was part of the Facebook group. Was I supposed to do that? <laughs> That's what she did. She did all this research. No, for her own making it. Oh, okay. And then, so she's got all this information. She'll be very Wow. It kind of took the maybe I don't know if it's because she's from a like Asian family and work hard, hard, but she kind of took that. It looks see that it seems to me like she took this sort of almost scientific approach to her work. You know? <laughs> very intense, lots of research. It's good that she was like so. It's very determined. It's crazy dedication. <laughs> yeah, she's very. So she's going to be joining us. Welcome to listen, or if you want to get going to see the friends. Hmm. Well, I guess I can stay for a little bit. Yeah, so I gotta invite her online and stuff. So you can go sit down over there if you want. And I gotta okay. give you